So a while back, I was uh, noticing that all my kits seem to be including the EC118 yeast. And I started to think, what would it be like if I swapped these yeast around? And if you're in the same boat, you've come to the right video. Now, I had to leave myself some notes here, so if I reference them, please don't be alarmed. The yeast that we're talking about today is 71B. So what makes 71B special? 71B is known for producing fruity esters, specifically red fruits, and uh, to get some tropical notes. Uh, this yeast will also partially metabolize uh, malic acid, which can soften acidity. It's uh, kind of ideal for fruit wines, rosés, aromatic whites. So I took a look back on my wine spreadsheet, and it turns out the... I actually thought the first wine swap I did, or yeast swap I did, was in a Moscato wine. That wasn't the case. It's actually an apple plum wine that I made that's uh, similar to the plum wine that I've got going on right now where I used 71B for the first time. That wine ended up turning out very good. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite wines that I've made from fruit. It, and it's not like, like, don't get me wrong, this is not like night and day where if you change this yeast, it'll just be like a game changer. It's not that. It will improve your wines. I definitely like the yeast swaps that I've done. All of them have improved my wine. It's not night and day. It's subtle, but it's definitely there. And if you're sipping and enjoying a wine, I think you'll definitely notice the uh, swaps are just one way of upgrading your whole winemaking experience. Okay, so what's the best fermentation temperature for 71B yeast? So Lavalin on their site has a pretty broad range. Although I found for myself, uh, it likes to be a little bit warmer than the EC118 yeast packet. I uh, like to run it somewhere around 22, 23. That seems to be really good. The tile floor that I'm sitting on here is uh, sometimes up to 24, and that's okay. I would say between 20 and 25 is probably a good range. That seems to be consistent with uh, what other Reddit users are finding as well. Although you can go higher, I wouldn't recommend going higher. If you do go higher, it's going to lead to uh, off flavors, sulfites maybe. And uh, you don't want to go too cool either. Uh, the fermentation will get stuck or stop. So something to be aware of there as well. Uh, to start out this fermentation as well, if you're using 71B, I strongly urge you to use Gofirm to rehydrate the yeast. That's been very successful for me. And just follow the instructions for uh, the Go Firm off of uh, the website and you'll be good to go. You can also find the video. I'll leave a link in the card up above. So how much alcohol can the 71B yeast handle? Well, the uh, practical tolerance, we're just gonna say it's gonna be 14%. If you go higher than that, uh, it might stall. The fermentation might not work out. You might get some off flavors. So it's good for table wines. Uh, not ideal for anything that's going to go with like a super high alcohol content. So question number four, does this yeast reduce malic acid? Short answer is yes. During fermentation, this yeast will consume between 20 and 40% of the malic acid inside of your must. Now this is great for high acid musts like cold climate grapes, apples, or berries. I specifically have tried it with apples and it was very successful there. So this might just eliminate the need for you to do an addition of malactic bacteria. I personally haven't touched on that yet. That might be something that I'm going to be working on in the future, but uh, I haven't touched on the addition of malactic bacteria yet. Okay, question number five we're at here. Does it produce sulfur smells? Generally a low H2S producer, it's considered. Nutrient stress can lead to sulfite odors. Um, I think what you can do to eliminate this is nutrient additions instead of putting all your nutrients at once when you start your fermentation out is definitely going to help with this. Using a good nutrient as well. I personally like Fermate O versus using DAP. You can use a combination of both, but uh, definitely not putting all your nutrients in there. I did notice that this yeast seems, seems to be a little slower to start and... Um, I'd say a little bit slower than the EC1118 yeast. I'm convinced this uh, 1118 yeast, you could ferment uh, concrete with it if you added a little bit of sugar. Early on, good oxygenation is also important to make sure that this yeast gets a good foothold and gets kind of running. 
Question number six. How does it compare to other yeasts? So 71B is fruity, softens acid, moderate alcohol tolerance. So comparing it to the EC118 yeast, is, which is probably the one that a lot of you have used just because it shows up in every kit. Uh, the EC1118 is neutral, robust. Uh, it's great for stuck fermentations, bottle conditioning. Another one that you might consider if you're looking at 71B is the QA23. That has more complex aromas, often used in whites. So that one I haven't tried. I can't speak to QA23 yet. I was very happy with the 71B. And uh, I don't know, personally, if you're going to try it and you already make kit wines, try it in a kit that you like where you know what the results are and then see if uh, it provides you with a flavor that you think is unique or you know it levels up the wine that's a good place to start for at least it was for me i quite enjoyed swapping it out of a kit wine the other thing to kind of keep in mind too is if you are swapping it out of a kit wine to take a look at the nutri nutrient requirements so the 1118 yeast and the 71b uh, they should have a very similar nutrient requirement but i think the, the latest publication uh, lists the 71B as needing more yeast nutrient. Anyway, more on yeast nutrients. Card is up above for that video. I kind of dive deeper into that and the nutrient additions, that kind of thing. So is this yeast good for all wine types? Uh, it is best suited for rosés, aromatic whites, and uh, fruit wines, berries, apples, and stone fruits specifically. Now, I did just start out a batch of wine here, and I did swap out the yeast. It's not 1118 in the plum wine that you see on the counter there. It's actually a D47, and after doing more research to make this video, I'm kind of half wondering if I shouldn't use the 71B. Uh, and I can't even do it next time. That fruit tree actually ended up getting a massive infection. It ended up getting cut down. So oh, that is the last of the stone fruit plum wine from my backyard. Different rant there. Some tips for success if you plan on doing a swap out for the, uh, 1118, the 1118 yeast to the 71B is first off use a nutrient schedule. Uh, I'm going to leave the video on the side here at the end of the video. Use that uh, calculator to make sure that you get the right amount of nutrient. Uh, nutrient additions versus dumping all your nutrients in. Consider using Fermate O as well instead of DAP. Uh, don't push your fermentation past 14%. Kind of keep the alcohol content a little bit lower. Uh, rehydration at the start using uh, GoFirm or GoFirm Sterile Flash, I think is the latest one where you don't have to heat up the water. It's a little bit easier to use. That'll also help your fermentation get off to a good start. And monitor fermentation temperature. Uh, definitely don't put this one in the garage. I think if you're starting this out initially, keep it in a climate control. Most of our house temperatures are probably very close to the right range. Now, as I'm sitting here editing this video, I realize I never talked about pH. It's literally on my computer screen right now. The ideal pH is between 3.2 and 3.5. If you're not into testing for pH yet, don't sweat that one too much. If you do have a pH meter, that's the range that works best for this yeast. So that is 71B in a nutshell. I hope I covered all the uh, questions that you had. Those were the questions that I had when I started, you know, mucking around and uh, using uh, different yeasts. If I missed a question, leave it in the comments down below. I'll do my best to get back to them uh, pretty quickly so that you guys can kick that off. I know it's uh, winemaking season right now. I'm actually uh, going to be starting another batch here shortly. Oh, and if you've used the 71B yeast, uh, leave your experience in the comments down below. Uh, if you like videos like this, uh, specifically this is a kind of a different style than what I typically do for videos on this channel. Uh, let me know what your feedback is. And if you enjoyed uh, winemaking content, that's all that's on this channel. Feel free to give me a sub, give me a thumbs up, and uh, 